Here we have a LiDAR scan. Uh, LiDAR is the technology to create 3D scans of large environments. And this particular scan is a so-called terrestrial scan that was taken with a LiDAR scanner mapped on a tripod. This was done by a collaborator of ours, Gerald Borden, from the USGS. And this data set specifically shows uh, the after effects of a landslide in Laguna Beach, Southern California from 2006. So what we have here uh, is a hilly area where a landslide happened, and we have a couple of houses here on the hill that are still standing there, and we have a couple of houses down here that slipped down the hill during the landslide. So a LiDAR viewer allows us to look at these LiDAR data without projecting them or resampling them to a mesh or to a grid. Uh, we can look at actually each individual point. So if you go in here, then each of these points on the wall is the result of the scanning laser hitting something in the environment and then bouncing back. So what that means is that you put all of these points together, and in this relatively small data set, there are approximately 22 million points altogether. We are getting this point-related, pixelated 3D model of a particular environment. So now I can not only look at this, and you can see very clearly here that this is where the landslide happened. This house has been undermined by the landslide. There's still a garden hose hanging down here from the faucet, but the garden is gone. And there are a couple of other houses down here I mentioned that have been damaged or destroyed. Here's a garage that still has a car in it and so forth. But more importantly, we can use LiDAR Viewer to take measurements of these LiDAR data, which are the same type of data we would normally collect uh, if you were to go out into the field and do field surveys. In this case, the field survey here would be a little bit dangerous uh, because these houses are you know, in danger of still falling down. So what I can do with LiDAR Viewer is I can create uh, a tool that allows me to measure very precisely the position, orientation, and size of features uh, based directly on the data. So I'm getting this, uh, I created a selection tool which maps a yellow sphere to my hand. And now I can use that to just interactively select points in the data that define certain features of interest. For example, here I'm selecting the points that make up uh, this wall of the house. I'm going to try and do a relatively decent job in not too much of time uh, so we get something good going. So I select all these points. And then I can ask the program to fit a geometric primitive to it. In this case, I'm going to fit a plane equation uh, to these points. And now if you allow me to do this, if you look at that, you can see how this plane approximates the, uh, the position of all those points. It is at least squares approximation to be precise. And I can continue doing that. For example, I can continue extracting or selecting points, defining this wall over here, get a few points on the other side, maybe a little bit down the door, I'm not going to be too precise right now. This is where, if you actually were to use this program, you'd spend quite a bit amount of your time getting the best possible measurements you can based on the availability of your data. And then I extract another plane equation, which now looks like this. I clear the selection again. And then last but not least, I'm going to select these points up here from the, uh, uh, from the underside of the, uh, of the balcony. In order to have three more or less orthogonal planes, you can see where I'm going with this. Okay, this was, oops, I selected some points I didn't want, so I'm going to erase those. Here we go. And then extract another plane equation. And now I have three plane equations. Uh, and of course, once I have three plane equations, I can intersect those and get a point. So I'm going to select this plane and that plane and that, and then ask the program to intersect these. And here we go now. It's a little bit hard to see, but where is it? Ah, right there. I'm pointing at it right here. Uh, we have the point that now very precisely defines the position of this corner of the house. Uh, and when I say very precisely, because it is based on so many measurements that each have their own inaccuracy, in this case about plus minus two millimeter, but by averaging over large numbers of points, we are getting the precision down to fractions of a millimeter in this case. So once I've done this, what we normally do is we use LiDAR data to evaluate the change in landscapes. So here, for example, we would have taken one scan at one time and then another scan a couple of hours later, and done the exact same processing in both cases, getting two point equations, and then we can see if this house is still moving or not over these couple of hours that we have in the survey uh, based on the change in position of this very well located point. We haven't done this in this case, uh, but that is what our students and researchers often do when they go out and measure landscapes after landslides or forest fires uh, or after earthquakes most, uh, more specifically. Um, for another example I can show you is here we have this pipe sticking out of the hill. I'm going to show you that like this. And let me zoom in a bit. And as you can see, there's really only half a pipe because it was only scanned from one side, and the laser scanner can obviously only scan what it sees. But we can maybe get a better idea of what is going on here by, again, selecting a bunch of points on this half pipe. Cut 
a few that I didn't want. Need to be precise here. Let it go. And then I ask the program to now extract a cylinder equation. And now you notice how the software reconstructed, let me show this to you, how the software reconstructed the exact full shape of that pipe based on this less than half coverage that was done from a single scan. So that's the idea here, uh, that LiDAR view allows us to, uh, to move through these LiDAR datasets interactively, very intuitively, I would say. I can go to all the other side of the scan, and then we see here, uh, Gerald accidentally scanned a, a van, and this looks like a utility vehicle. There's actually a, wait, there's a person here sitting in that van, in the truck, apparently talking on his cell phone. That's our best interpretation. Um, but more importantly, we cannot just look at these data, um, but we can measure them just like we would in the field, only we can do so in the comfort of our offices or, or, or labs. Uh, and we can do in many cases with higher precision than we can do this in the field because we, can, we have so many data points over which to average. Uh, thank you very much.